G'day. I'm visiting the wonderful Mount Barney and looking at Logan's Ridge. As a lot of us know, conditions on the mountain change year by year and I'm thinking to update the conditions on this ridge in winter of 2023. This first section is a forest trail that eventually leads up to the first rocks at the base of the mountain. It's about a kilometre or so long and rises gently in the staircase style. About halfway along, we'll reach a stony section and we'll find a cairn. And this cairn denotes the turn off for North Ridge. We continue following the ridge upwards and we can see the mountain through the trees here. And now the footpad can become annoyingly vague and there are other diversions but it's best to stick with the main footpad it's the key to saving energy and when we get to these larger rocks we're approaching the mountain unfortunately now the footpad becomes even more vague And at the top of this section, pretty much a scrub bush to the first rocks. And from the first rocks, there are two ways here. Around to the right, climbing these dusty slabs. And around to the left, by climbing through the branches of this fallen tree. And both of those ways lead up to this forested section before the first slabs. And that brings us out into the sections of open rock and there are three ways here. Firstly the general footpad route steps up through these rocks here on the left. And then heads up through that steep gully there. And to the left of that gully is a long tall rock which can also be climbed and that's the second way. And finally, this slab itself can be climbed, although it's one of those typical Mount Barney slab climbs that gets steeper at the top. All three of these ways lead to a lookout at the top of the slabs. I'll stick to the footpad through the gully and here it is with the long tall rock on the left. The 
top of this gully is really steep. We use those trees to help pull ourselves up. And the crown of a fallen tree has landed in the top of the gully, creating this mess which has to be gotten through. And here's the gully from above. And if I look over here, this is the top of that open slab climb. And as I said, get steeper at the top. Just above is this distinctive rock. Footpad runs around the left of it, or we can climb the rocks on the right. Here's the slab top lookout. And unfortunately, we've lost our shady tree, it's fallen over. Now we want to head into the bottom of this gully. It's a little awkward to get into. A little higher again, the gully steepens off and it is possible to get through that way, but it's a bit easier to cross this rock stack on the right. can kind of just step up through here. And standing on the rock stack, I can see up to the top of this gully, and in those boulders above there is a cairn. Top of the gully again. There used to be a big pile of deadfall here that has been pulled away. Thanks whoever did that. And here's the cairn. And this cairn denotes a slight turning to the left. We're going to head up into those rocks there. In this section first there's a tricky little scramble and then a false trail off to the left. In general we want to keep to the right and up higher is the first obstacle. Here's the little scramble got a left or a right. This whole area here is quite awkward to deal with. Here's the little false trail on the left I mentioned. And it leads up to a slippery climb up there. I've never been able to get through it. But up there at that small tree that's the obstacle we want to get to, and we get there by keeping right. The way leads up to this sheer wall, and off to the left here is the obstacle. And we just wedge our way up through the crack, 
Ah, oh, but it's quite awkward because of the height. There's another way on the left here. It's probably no easier and a little more exposed. But we step down onto that small block there and while grabbing underneath the boulder in that lip do a leg stretch out to those nobbles in the rock there. Then we can get up on top of the rock and go around the back of it. And as for this side, these are the two first steps. And up top we kind of grab each side of the chalk stone. Despite all those helpful steps down there, there's always a point where we have to just pull ourselves over the chalk stone using upper body strength. And if we look straight up from here, we can see the lookout that is behind the knoll top, which is just above here. The way leads up to this clump of trees, and we turn hard left here. This leads up to the knoll top. Here's this knoll, and it's the top of the whole first section. And here's the lookout behind. From the lookout we can see back down onto the obstacle. And we can also see across a lot of the route we took to get in here. up to North Peak. And we can see to the next section the climb to the notch. I still remember how shocked I was when I first saw that. This section leading up to the notch climb is really overgrown. We've just got to keep to the footpad as we force our way through. Okay, climb to the notch. First, get up that bottleneck on the right, then we head up and onto that ledge on the left. Have to be okay with heights and exposure to go above here. bottleneck itself is a little bit difficult to get onto, but there are some little ledges on the right. See, just here. Okay, here's the ledge. You can see that it narrows in the middle here.
and it's the exposure that's the problem because we're up above this large drop. And here it is up close and of course we want to get this right so it's good to note that this bulge up here just beyond it is pretty unhelpful because it's quite slippery so just be prepared for that. Beyond there it's fine, we just want to reach the top of this gully and there's a small tree there to climb. And now looking back across that narrow section These slippery leaves are very annoying. And here's the tree. And we climb up there. And from the tree if we look straight up here, there's a bunch of kind of crenellated rocks and people who have been up here before often climb straight up here. But I'm going for the footpad, which is slightly to the right through that gully. these crisscrosses in the rock. I'm going to head up that channel on the left. But first a quick look back. It's looking down the crenellated rocks back to the tree. And here's the channel that I'll head up. But first I'll just have a look off here to the left. There's a ledge and a lookout. And here we see across to the southeast ridge. It is possible to follow this ledge around, and there's a way up at the very end of it, but we have to climb over a huge drop, and it's quite unsafe. back at the channel, heading up. And at the top, this awkward section The only footstep is at about shoulder height. It's all very steep. Okay, through that bit. There's the gully over there. And above that, footpad runs around through the scrub on the left, but I'm just going to cross these rocks on the right. Up higher becomes easier. Just before the notch, we leave the ridge crest and head left. It 
just around the corner, this resting rock. This is most of the gear I bring on a day trip. I've learned to bring extra food on a Logan's trip. It's very energy intensive. Now we climb the notch wall. First we shimmy across some little nobbles along the lower section. And then we climb the wall by using a whole bunch of juggy rocks for handholds and footsteps. Once we're above the notch wall, we get this massive view to the upper mountain. Climb through this bluff using the natural steps. Above there the Razorback continues. And then we head up here through this steep crumbly section below the protruding rock. And this section below it is especially steep and slippery. It has two sections and this is the upper part. And there it is from above. Now we head up to the next bluff top and the bottom of a chimney. Yes, the chimney. I'll quickly just look behind at the rock stacks. and the chimney leads up there. A 
Okay, here the chimney. Uh, the steps and handholds are all in the right places. The only problem is that the rock's quite smooth. And here we see it from above. Up here, it's still really steep and crumbly and leads up to a short wall. And the short wall, we climb this. Standing on the wall, we can see on to the upper mountain. Now, we're going to climb to the highest knoll, and the route is quite overgrown here but it zigzags right, left, and then right again. Staying to the right of this rock wall. Now we head left across the top of those rocks. The route heads up and looks briefly out over the east face. And the final zigzag to the right begins here. the summit rocks and off to the left is the highest knoll which is always worth a visit. And we can look down onto where we've come up from and that's the notch on the right. Over here to the southeastern ridges. And here the view to the north. And all that haze is from the beginning of the burn off season. It's still pretty clear over towards Mount Warning. And now for the summit rocks. And this is another place that I remember being really shocked the first time I saw it. This is the beginning, climbing this. Generally use this as a footstep. And in that little gap there, there's a handhold. And that's from above. And here's the highest knoll. A little 
little higher, the gully gets really steep. And so we cross to the right into the next gully. And we then climb to this pinnacle. Okay, here's the pinnacle, which is also a razorback. And as I've said before, this is the most exposed part of the climb. We get up there along this ledge. is looking further along the Razorback and this is the ledge from the top Beyond the Razorback, we climb through this scrubby channel to an angled sloping rock. Okay, angled sloping rock. We can cross to the left halfway up. And that just leaves the final gully, and it's a steep one. Okay, I've ascended a little. And where the gully gets too steep, the pad diverges to the right. Not far now. I've got summit fever. Yes. Well, that was great. A trip along Logan's Ridge. Excellent stuff. And the day's getting away on me now, so I'm thinking to do what most people do in descending the southeast ridge. So I guess I'm thinking to wrap it up here. That's it from me. See ya.